Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today, we're making a block of wood with a whole bunch of holes in it. <laughs> Let's dive in. And here is the dowel plate. I did a video on this a while ago and it works pretty well, but you have to be careful it doesn't crank over to the side like that because, you know, that gets annoying and it doesn't leave you with a nice clean surface. So today we're going to fix that. We're going to make a dowel box. This is a box that the, will hold the plate and will actually channel the dowels so that they can't turn. We're going to be using a big block of walnut that I have. It's just a, a scrap that I had in the shop that is, well, I've been I've made a whole pile of different projects out of this over the years. And it's actually the scrap from my, my chops on my twin vise. So just like any other project, we need to start by squaring this up. And I arbitrarily pick one edge and I make that flat and true. And then I'm going to pick another side and make it 90 degrees to the first edge that I made. And now we have a side and an edge that I can then judge everything off of. And everything else can then be squared to those two faces. And this way you end up with something that is parallel on every opposite side. And it's a really nice clean thing. Does it have to be this? No. Uh, it's just a block with a bunch of holes through it that the plate sits on top of. But it's a good chance to practice your skills and make sure everything is flat and square and true. Now the next thing I need to do is figure out how tall do I want to make this. And I made it about two inches tall. Uh, any taller than that, and I, I might, it's just not needed. Um, you don't need to make it any, any bigger than that. It's not going to make them any straighter or a, a better cut. But uh, you, you make it whatever height you want. Um, <laughs> I actually have seen dowel boxes that are over six inches tall. Um, but I like about two inches. It doesn't take up so much, much space in the shop. So we're going to rip this down to get the height of the box. And uh, it's sometimes easier to rip from one side and then rip from the other and then meet in the inner middle rather than going all the way down through. Uh, this is thick enough. It's almost a resaw, depending upon what you classify that. So then we can come in, take the saw marks off of that, and make sure that it is then parallel to other sides and square as well. On the end grain, it's a little more difficult. Uh, I, this is too large for my shooting board because uh, it's almost two inches by a little over two inches. And uh, so I, I can't shoot it. I have to actually square it up freehand. So I'm going to draw the line and cut off the excess on the end. And then we'll come in with a plane and, and uh, freehand shoot it. Now, when you're freehand shooting, you want to be careful uh, not to blow off the other side. You want to just plane into the middle and then stop in the middle. Don't go past and run off the other side. But with a little bit of practice, it actually works out pretty well. You just come around it from either side and end in the middle. And so then we basically have a block on here. The next thing I need to do is make the layout. Where will all of this house into it? And I actually want to recess this plate down into it. Uh, if you haven't seen the, the plate, I have an entire video talking through this one and why I got it. It's from uh, DFM Toolworks. Uh, he does amazing, amazing work. Um, actually, he's one of my patrons, so thank you. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I have a lot of uh, lot of tools that I, I, I like from him, and he actually is the guy who makes uh, the card scrapers that I sell as well. Um, does a, a phenomenal job on everything he touches. But okay, back to this. So let's actually start chopping this out. So it's going to be like a really big bow tie. I'm going to mark it out. I'm going to stay away from the line. I'm going to chop in and then pare it in. And then once I get down a little ways, then we can come in with the router plane and take it off layer by layer until we get down to depth. Now, the one problem we have is on this is a very thin amount on the end grain. And eventually, uh, I ended up chipping it off. And this is something I was trying not to do, um, but I, I did not leave enough on there. If I were to do it over again, um, I may have made the side a little bit bigger. I might have uh, um, done something a little differently. But I, in this case, I just had a chip. So I figured, oh, let's glue it back on. We can do that. I saved the chip. A little bit of super glue on a small piece like this. Not a huge issue. Hit it with some activator, and you can get right back to work. It's very fast. And this is fantastic for cleaning up little problems and chips. And you have to be very careful here when you're pushing. Don't jab into the end and blow off those little pieces. But eventually, um, I ended up blowing off another piece on that very same end. And uh, um, yeah, I just did not leave myself Aww. enough material. And see, there, there's that piece broken. And I had to look around on the floor for the piece that broke off. And eventually, I realized I'm never going to find that little piece. So uh, yeah, we're going to have a chip missing out of it. So I'm going to glue back on as much as I can. And then we'll have a little chip hanging off of the other side. Oh well, um, you know, that's one of the great lessons to learn. You're always going to make mistakes. And, and you see all these videos on YouTube of absolute perfection and things looking amazing. And they aren't that way. 
Uh, you go see those things in person and you'll realize, oh, they're human too. There's lots of little mistakes in it. Uh, it just takes a little more work to, to show them on YouTube. But somewhere around here, I then blow off the edge again. Um, and so then I decide, you know what? I'm just going to leave that whole end off. Just the way it is. Might as well. Oh, well. <laughs> Such is life. And every time I look at it, I'll be like, yeah, I need to learn from that. I need to do better. But the other three sides turned out really good. And you can see how that fits in there. So now that I have the lard reset in, now I'm going to recess again down in farther for the second lip to fit into. So that this whole thing will then recess all the way down in and be flush with the top. Do I need to do that? No. Uh, it, this is, a, again, a, a good chance to learn. Try something new. Stretch yourself. Push your boundaries a little bit. Do things that you think are, mm, yeah, I don't need to do that. But yeah, I can do that because I want to learn something new. I want to try and become something better. I want to do something different that I haven't done before. So sometimes, yeah, it may be a little more difficult, but try it. You might learn a new skill. So we're just doing the same thing over again, chop in around the outside and then come in with the router plane and clean it all out until eventually it taps down in and you got a nice flush plate all the way across. Yay! So now we need to drill all the holes through and I need to actually center those out. So what I found is the, the two on the end, the all fits down in perfectly, I can mark those out. And then for the rest of them, uh, I tried putting drill bits in each one to try and mark the center and it just didn't work out. What I ended up doing was actually marking the end ones, so the end of each string, and then I came back in with the all and marked where they crossed. And then I could draw a line from one end to the other because I noticed all of the holes on center are in line. So I could drew, draw the line from one end to the other and then I knew what the spacing was in between them, I could come back and make the marks on here. And this actually worked really well to, to space out exactly where all the holes would be. And then we can start to, to drill them out. Now, these were all uh, cut to the 32nd of inch. So each one of these holes is a 32nd of inch smaller. Well, all of my bits are a 16th of an inch smaller to the next one. And so that means that every other, every two holes will have the same size bit. So um, I want to make each bit a 32nd of an inch larger than it needs to be. So each hole is ever so slightly larger than the size of the, the actual diameter of the hole that's being pounded through it. I hope that makes sense, but every pair, so there'll be two together that each have individual sizes. We're going to start by drilling the holes and we go until they just poke out the other side and then we can come in with a bit and clean them from the other side that we have a nice clean exit wound or at least we'll attempt it to have a nice clean exit wound uh, because you're drilling so many holes this close together, uh, you're, you're always going to have issues on the backside. Oh well, don't worry about it. Add a little bit of wax to your screws before putting them in. It makes them a little easier to drive into the holes, uh, especially with the, the old flatheads going down and deep and with a large one. Adding a little bit of wax to the thread does some amazing work and you can drive them in rather nicely. We're going to snug these up and if you've done it right, the wax will then squeeze out around the top and it's a very pleasing thing when it, when it squeezes out. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, it's just tactilely interesting. Tactilely? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> So um, after this, we're going to then chamfer the edges and kind of do the finishing touches on this. It doesn't need too much more. It actually doesn't need anything more. It's a functional block. Now that the holes are in the back, they will support the, the bit a bit more. But for the finish on this, of course, we're going to use my boiled linseed oil and paste wax. This is a homemade boiled linseed oil. I have a video on making that as well as making the paste wax I put onto it. But with this walnut, it just brings out the rich color in it that's phenomenal. Wait a second. Oh, yeah. Well, we're not going to leave it there. This is wood by right. There. We're going to do a little bit more. No. And what does that mean? Celtic carving. carving. <laughs> I found this pattern. Uh, and I, I usually just go on Google Docs or uh, Google Images and find something. So I was just searching for Celtic weave, and this one popped up, and I really, really liked it. Um, so we can paste that on there. And uh, if they're never quite the size, the nice thing about the Celtic weave is you can cut it at any point and then bring the ends in closer together. So I'm actually going to make this pattern all the way around it um, on all four sides. I find it easier when you're doing this repeating pattern, do all of them that are in one direction. And then once that's done, then you can turn 90 degrees and do all of them in the other direction. And then once that's done, then you can do all of the curves running in one direction. You do all the curves running in the other direction. Uh, it breaks it up so that you're not going back and forth. You're always using the, the same hand movements in the same place. It makes it a little bit simpler, and it's actually really good for learning that muscle memory view because you're doing that same maneuver over and over and over again. Uh, it's, a, it's a good way for it. You'll notice some places here I'm just freehand pushing it, 
and some places I'm using the tapping. Uh, it's good to learn both skills because it's it's faster to freehand it, but the, uh, the, the mallet actually gives you far more control and less chance you're going to blow out. So using both in different situations, it's just good to learn that. Once the, the carving is all done, then we can scrape off the pattern. And I know a lot of people really worry about scraping off this. It's not that big a deal. I mean, usually the next thing I'm going to do is scrape the wood to smooth it, but um, the cart scraper works really well for that. Now for the end grain, it's much the same, except for I don't have to worry much about the grain direction. I just have to be very careful. Sometimes it cuts really well and you jab out. <laughs> that wouldn't have happened if I were tapping with a mallet, um, but when you're doing it uh, freehand, every now and then that, uh, that comes out. Oh well. So we're going to uh, work our way all the way around this block, doing it on all sides, scrape off the excess, and then we can go back in and once again apply the finish. Boiled linseed oil, let it soak in uh, as much as it wants, and then come back with paste wax. And yeah, I realized the, the corners were a bit sharp, and having this Celtic weave on there it looks really good just to chamfer them. Now let's take this thing for a test drive and you can see how it's staying much straighter. There's a little bit of wobble in this one because it's one that is a full 16th off. Once I move it over to one that is on uh, the, uh, uh, the 32nd, whatever the half was, <laughs> it actually drives down in really nicely and you're left with a really smooth surface, keeping the dowel nice and straight, that way it's not uh, warping as much. I'm much, much happier with this. So onto the finish, and I'm really happy with how this came out. The, the carving in it really pops out, and the Celtic weave is, is phenomenal for the, uh, the oil, how it soaks in more with the, the grain that's exposed, and uh, yeah, just really, really pleasing. So not only is it a useful tool, but it looks good, and I'm looking forward to using it for many, many years to come. And there's a little bit of a mistake on one end, so it's a learning experience. It always reminds me, maybe I should think about that a little more next time. Learn from your mistakes, and everything will go smoother in the future. Ooh la la. So there you have it, a dowel plate block. It's a really simple project, and it's one of those fun things. If you have a dowel plate, this makes the, the dowel cuts so much smoother and easier. Uh, it's one of those things I, I've been wanting to build for a long time, but I always have just been like, oh, I'll get around to it eventually. Um, now I've got it. Also, you know, it's one of those fun projects that you can kind of stretch yourself and do something a little bit more, add in some carving, trying and doing cuts in different ways. Make mistakes, it's okay, that's what life is all about. You learn best when you make some mistakes and, and learn from them. Or at least hopefully we learn from them. <laughs> but some things, uh, yeah, you'll keep making them. So I hope you like this really simple project. If you'd like to see the dowel plate from DFM Toolworks, I'll leave a link to that down below. So if you do have any questions, comments, ideas, thoughts, let me know those in the comments down below. I do read through all of them and I answer as many as I possibly can. Also, I wanna say a huge thank you to everyone scrolling over on the side, especially ah, DFM Toolworks. He's one of the, uh, the top patrons. Thank you for supporting the channel and keeping things coming. If you do ever meet anyone who's scrolling over on the side, tell them thank you. They are quite literally the ones keeping the lights on. And if you'd like to find, more, find out more about Patreon or becoming a member, you can click the little join button down below, or you could become a member. There's a link to that down below on Patreon. And that is one of the main sources of income for this channel, the reason we can keep going. So thank you to everyone who's supporting. We'll keep them coming as long as you want them. So I think that'll about do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. This is the type of thing you would find in a church. I mean, just look at it. The thing is really holy.